Good evening and welcome to Mississippi Talks with Governor Haley Barber. I'm Ron Brown. State agencies and schools all across Mississippi from K-12, community colleges and universities are all trying to decide how to trim their budgets. Earlier this month, Governor Barber cut nearly $172 million from the state's overall $6 billion budget because of declining tax collections. Tonight, the governor is here to talk about those spending cuts and Mississippi's economic outlook. He will answer your questions for the next half hour. You may begin calling us right now. The toll-free number from anywhere in Mississippi is 1-877-405-5247. That number again is 1-877-405-5247, and we do hope you call. For those of you on the Internet, you may email your question to Mississippi Talks at mpbonline.org. Governor Barber, we welcome you to our MPB studios, and we understand you have an opening statement. Ron, thank you. Good evening to everybody. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I want to thank Mississippi Public Broadcasting for making this time available on its television and radio networks so we can talk about the serious business of state government, <clears throat> including the spending cuts I announced on September 3rd. I'm going to have some brief opening comments, so you can, but we're going to save time for your questions. Let's get right to the point. We won't have enough revenue to meet our budgeted expenditures for fiscal year 2010, much less for fiscal years 2011 and 12. For fiscal year 2010, which began on July 1, actual revenue has been lower than expected. In July, revenue was 11.27% or $26.1 million below what was forecast. Although revenue in August was closer to expectations, it was still $5.5 million below the estimate, missing the mark by almost 2%. Mississippi has collected less revenue than expected every month for an entire year. The FY 2010 budget assumed we'd collect more tax revenue than last year. So the shortfall below the revenue estimate, while still very large, masks the magnitude of the problem we may be facing. Actual collections for July fell 21.5% or $56.3 million when compared to July 08, one year before. When compared to the same two-month period in 2008, our collections in July and August were down 13.83%, a decrease of more than $85 million. If this trend continues, we'd miss our FY10 revenue estimate by more than $800 million. While that larger shortfall is not likely, it is also not impossible. Most likely or probable is a revenue shortfall of about $175 to $350 million. So as required by state law, I ordered cuts in state spending, including education, to meet our balanced budget requirements. Accordingly, it was necessary to revise fiscal year 2010 budgets to achieve, to achieve a savings of about $172 million. These cuts are in effect now, and it's likely that further cuts in state spending will be necessary as the fiscal year moves along. As you might know, governors are prohibited from cutting any agency by more than 5% until all agencies are cut by at least 5%. Although I've previously attempted to avoid cuts to education spending, that's simply no longer possible. Our FY 2010 budget already imposed substantial cuts on many agencies, but included record education spending. Education spending is well over 60% of the state budget, so it's not possible to make meaningful savings while keeping education untouchable. The spending reductions I ordered aim to ensure belt tightening is felt across government. For those agencies that were not cut a full 5% below last year by the budget, I ordered reductions to bring those cuts up to 5%. Agencies that previously saw budgeted appropriations cut by 5% or more were left alone for the time being. Some agencies like Medicaid have been exempted from cuts. Most education units will see a 5% reduction below the appropriated level of spending. For now, national board certified teachers pay and student financial aid won't be cut at all, nor will spending that results from court orders or legal settlements. Even after these cuts, education spending will be $20 million more than last year. 
all three levels of education, K through 12, community colleges, and universities will have more to spend this year than last year because of federal stimulus funds. Some rec recommended postponing these cuts to a later date, but that approach is imprudent. The sooner the cuts are mandated, the more time agencies have to spread out savings over the rest of the fiscal year. This is not business as usual. Legislators, state agencies, and citizens must understand that these extraordinary times are going to demand decisive action. In Mississippi, we know all too well what a storm on the horizon looks like, and we know we have to make wise choices to prepare for one. Although we don't know yet how bad this budgetary storm is going to be in FY 2010, it's already begun to hit us. While I hope revenue will improve, we have to make prudent fiscal choices now and going forward. Okay, Governor. Well, thank you very much again for coming to the studios, and we're going to get to a phone call in just a, a minute here. But first, you talked about the cuts that you had to make. Uh, can you tell us who advises you on these matters of the state's uh, budget, tax collections, and these most recent cuts? The principal agency that I receive information from is the Department of Finance and Administration, but they are receiving uh, information also from the State Tax Commission, who actually collects the taxes, mm -hmm. the Legislative Budget Office, the State Treasurer's Office. It's, a, it's a, a group, and of course the state economist here at IHL, where Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Uh, we look to all of them, uh, but the most direct agency that I deal with almost every day is the Department of Finance and Administration. It's the state equivalent of what's called OMB for the federal government, the mm -hmm. Office of Management and Budget. Mm -hmm. and that's a lot of advisors. Uh, well, it is. It's a lot of information. Complicated uh, state financing is very complicated. Uh, when you look at these budgets, um, we collect a huge percentage of our revenue the last three months of the year. But you can't wait till then to make decisions about cuts. If I, if I make cuts effective January 1st and say 5%, that means in the second six months of the fiscal year, an agency would have to make a 10% cut over six months to get a 5% reduction for the whole fiscal year. And that's why it's more prudent to give them as much time as you can because they can build the cuts in over, a, in this case, a 10-month period of time. Mm -hmm. For the schools, we try to give them as much of the school year as possible. Mm -hmm. I imagine that we're going to be hearing a lot of uh, questions about schools and education because that's a very important topic, as it always is in all matters. Well, it's the biggest item in our budget. We spend about 63% of the general fund equivalent budget on education. Mm -hmm. We have our first call here. This is Nick from Starkville. And first, uh, Nick, before we put you on, I want to let everybody else know what that telephone number is if you have a, a question for the governor. 1-877-405-5247. Right now, Nick from Starkville has a question for Governor Barber. Hi, Governor. We all appreciate you taking your time to inform the public a little bit more about the budget situation in the state. Um, my question was, I heard you mention something about the stimulus. I was wondering, have any other parts of the budget been affected by the stimulus, and what do you see effects of the stimulus over the next few months to be? Uh, Nick, yeah, a lot of the budget is affected by the stimulus. Uh, education will receive not quite $400 million spread over three years technically, but because the stimulus package was not passed till February of this year and most of the rules weren't decided for several weeks after that, all of that $393 million that Mississippi will receive in stimulus money will actually be spent in this fiscal year, which began July 1, and the next fiscal year. So about $196 million will go to K-12 through getting the lion's share, but also community colleges and universities. As I mentioned, uh, even after the 5% cut that I made September 3rd, for those three big agencies in state government, as I, I mentioned earlier, they spend about 63% of the total state uh, general fund budget. For them, despite the cuts, they will still receive more money to spend this year than they got last year. Now, as you're alluding to, a big chunk of that, $196 million, is coming from federal stimulus money. The other big place that stimulus affects us is in Medicaid. Unlike 
education where they give us extra money. For Medicaid, they reduce the amount the state has to pay in what we call state share. Medicaid's a federal state program. The federal government normally pays about 75% of the cost. State of Mississippi pays about 25, give or take 100 basis points. They've cut our rate that we have to pay down to more like 15, 16%. That savings, which will ultimately be about $750 million spread over three years, that savings first goes to keep Medicaid going, but then there is a little bit left over that we try to spread around state government. And one thing the legislature did this year that I'm very proud of them for, they took $60 million of money we normally spend on Medicaid and they carried it forward to next year because we know next year we're going to have a shortfall in Medicaid money for this reason. The federal money that we're getting from Medicaid runs out December 31st of next year. So it runs out in the middle of the next fiscal year, fiscal year 11. So you have a good bit of state government is affected by this. Okay, Governor, uh, we also are receiving some questions from email at Mississippi Talks at mpbonline.org. And this uh, first question is actually more of a statement than a question from Barbara. It says, the governor's cuts indicate that education is not his top priority. It's about time the students of Mississippi get preferential treatment when it comes to education. She says, as a native Mississippian, I am ashamed to be on the bottom of any media list ranking, but especially education. What, uh, what can you tell Barbara and maybe uh, what can you say about what happens if any more cuts are necessary in education? Well, here's what I would tell Barbara very simply. In my first four years, education spending went up by a record amount of any four years in the history of Mississippi. It was already the top priority in state government, has been for years and years. We spend more on education than all the rest of government put together. Our public schools get about $4.2 billion to educate about 470,000 students. So it's way, way, way more than $8,000 per student. Some of that they get from the state, about $2.5 billion. Some from the counties, some from the federal government. But they get about $4.2 billion to spend on our K-12 schools. We have about the same number of students today we had when Ronald Reagan was president. The amount of money that we spend has gone up by multiples, and it should. However, they can't be immune from controlling the budget. Our budget this year, as passed, would have resulted in record spending of for K-12 through schools by a factor of 7.2%, even though state revenue was $380 million below what we expected. So when the highway patrol is taking cuts and the Department of Health is taking cuts and everybody else is taking cuts, including the governor's office, which mm -hmm. is taking a 6% cut this year, the ones that had already been cut by at least 5%, I exempted. And for K-12 through education, uh, they and the community colleges and the universities will still get more money than they got last year, which is a, those are about the only parts of state government where that's true. Well, you say that uh, you've made no cuts to corrections, saying that doing so would put prisoners out on the streets. Why is that not an option as well uh, in corrections? Well, I'll give you an example, because early in my administration, we literally reduced the corrections budget by $15 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, it went down from $300 million to 285. So they've already had their cut? And we, we got rid of 600 and something people. And we have sl that has slowly built back up so that spending on corrections has gone up about 10% in five years or about 2% a year. Mm -hmm. Spending on K-12 through education has gone up about 35%. And rightly, as I say, education is our number one priority. We, we push money to education. But education cannot be immune from the reality of state finance, particularly when others took their cuts first, and when education had some lesser cuts last year, we restored all of those for this year, which we couldn't do for other agencies, regrettably. Okay. 
Uh, for those of you listening on uh, MPB Think Radio and uh, online, this is Mississippi Talks with Governor Haley Barber, and he's answering your questions about the state budget. You can give us a call at 1-877-405-5247 or email mississippitalks at mpbonline.org. And, Governor, we have a call from Tupelo. This is Kimmy from Tupelo with a question. Go ahead, Kimmy. Um, good evening, Governor. I'd like to ask why is it that Medicaid recipients can't be asked to make co-payments on some of the services they receive? Seniors and all the other people of Mississippi are being asked to make sacrifices, so why can't Medicaid recipients be asked to do the same? Amen to you, Kimmy. The fact of the matter is the state asks for the maximum copayment. The problem is the federal government will not allow us to require people to make the copayments. If a Medicaid beneficiary tells a provider, I can't afford to make the copayments, the federal government doesn't allow us to enforce that. Now, one of the good things, Kimmy, that you'll be glad to hear we do have some providers, particularly like small town doctors and pharmacists, who know these people and say, well, you sure can make this copayment, and you, we're expecting you to make it. But it is not enforceable by law. A number of members of the legislature have tried repeatedly to come up with a way that we can have an enforceable copayment for Medicaid, but the federal government simply doesn't allow us to do it. It is needed. It's only fair. Let me mention one thing about our budget that I think is important for people. The likelihood is the budget situation is going to get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I would like for people to give some thought to. Uh, our revenue continues to fall, as I talked about in my opening remarks. Employment is still soft and is not going to go up anytime soon. Uh, banks are not lending money. Credit card companies are tightening up. It's very hard to see how our tax revenue is going to go up appreciably in the near future. There was an excellent op-ed piece by the governor of Indiana in the Wall Street Journal uh, Friday or so ago about this. My point in making that is we need to understand that it can't be business as usual going forward that we've got to think outside the box about how we can continue to operate state government and provide the services that our constituents need and deserve and do it for less money. Uh, it, it's going to take some serious thinking, but I think everybody here who's watching tonight, whether you work for the government, at school, got kids in school, we're going to have to learn how to do some of these things for less money because it is not likely our revenue will be back to it where it was a year ago, which was record revenue. It's not going to come back to that in a few months. It's probably going to be two or three or four years before we get back to the revenue that, frankly, we had become accustomed to. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a long haul. We have a uh, question here from Meridian. This is Jimmy from Meridian with a question for Governor Barber. Go ahead, Jimmy. Thank you for coming before the people of Mississippi and answering our questions. We appreciate that, and I appreciate the job you're doing. Thank My you. concern is one-time money, stimulus money included, and the problems that it creates in the budgeting process for the future. Uh, and uh, I'd like to hear your comments on that, if you would, please. Well, you're exactly right. Uh, one of the reasons that the revenue problem in front of us is going to be more severe than we've dealt with is because this year and next we're having artificially almost five hundred million dollars added to our budget and that money will start disappearing in the second half of the next fiscal year which starts January of 2011 we will have a hundred fifteen million dollar shortfall because of some Medicaid stimulus money that goes away. Another $125 million of that will go away six months later. I mentioned that we're spending $196 million of federal money a year on our K-12 through schools. Well, actually on all of education, primarily on our K-12 through schools, but on all of education. That's why, Jimmy, 
we had record funding for education in our budget by 7.2 percent for K through 12. At the same time, you had other state agencies take a 5 percent cut. When that federal money disappears, then we're going to have a real hard time figuring out how to get off that mountain of spending if we don't start now. So your, your point is exactly uh, consistent with why I wanted to say to people, we're just not going to have as much money in the coming years as we were used to, partially because of this total uh, of more than a billion dollars of federal money that we'll spend essentially over two and a half years. Okay, Governor. Uh, legislators are going to begin budget hearings next week looking ahead to next year's budget. Uh, do you have any advice uh, to these lawmakers and to agency heads who are going to be coming before them with budget requests for 2011? Uh, don't expect business as usual. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not going to be able to fund a lot of in increased budgets. Most everybody is likely to see a reduced budget. People need to be figuring out how to live with it, how to provide the services. Uh, and they need to be prepared to think outside the box. Uh, so my advice for them, pretty simple. Pray for the best, but prepare for the worst. Okay. Buck from Oxford is on the line now. And uh, the phone number again is one 405 5247 Buck, go ahead with your question for the governor. Good evening, sir. Hey, Buck. Uh, my question is really quite simple. Um, in a state that has underperforming schools when they're compared nationally on the NAEP test, you should know this well, um, and in a state that receives a disproportionate amount of federal dollars and has one of the most regressive tax structures in the country, it really seems to me like your um, fiscal austerity measures fall disproportionately on the backs of the poor people in this state and the marginalized people in this state. And it was it rang true, as you told the caller from Tupelo, that yes, people on Medicaid should be forced to co-pay for what they receive. I'm wondering if you can tell me about, number one, when there's going to be some time for folks who are wealthy in a state to pay their part, and two, when there's going to be talk about raising additional revenue rather than cutting money from people who are already vulnerable. I really feel like, Governor, that it would have been a courageous gesture for you to go somewhere like West Tallahatchie County and announce these educational cuts because taking 5% from those folks is taking a lot away, and it, it really hurts a lot of people who need tremendous help. Okay. So, again, I'm wondering when will the wealthy pay their part and when are you going to start talking about raising additional revenue okay. rather than cutting back from the vulnerable okay. government? Well, let me say to you that, of course, everybody's welcome to their opinion. Uh, I think our tax system, uh, when you include the federal tax system, is still overly progressive, if you will. Most people in Mississippi don't pay any income tax. Uh, a small percentage pay any state income tax. Uh, but everybody in Mississippi pays sales taxes. Uh, I think our system is designed where everybody pays something and the people that make more pay more and those that make a lot more pay a lot more. I do look at the tax system as a unified tax system. Everybody who pays Mississippi taxes, in your case also pays Lafayette County taxes, and they also pay federal taxes. So you can't, to me, isolate the state tax and not include the people who pay very large percentages of their income in federal taxes. And I, I appreciate the work that was done by the State uh, Tax Study Commission to look at this very question. And they came to the conclusion that in Mississippi, everybody pays their fair share, and that if we were going to do anything to try to improve the state, it would be to lower business taxes so we can get more businesses to come to Mississippi and generate more jobs and more incomes. And that is how I judge this. Uh, I'm certainly not perfect as governor, but I am proud of the fact that my first five years as governor, per capita income in Mississippi went up 28%. I can't think of anything better that I can do for Mississippians than to help them help themselves. Uh, our emphasis on workforce development and job training pushes more people who are not ever going to have a bachelor's degree and don't need one, gives them the opportunity to upgrade their skills where they can have better jobs and make more money. 
that's what I think is the best thing for Mississippi. There are other people than you who disagree with me, but the people of Mississippi have been good enough to elect me twice, and I'm going to stay focused on that same path that I've been on from the beginning. Okay, Governor. Now, I know there are a lot of people out there who have some suggestions, have some thoughts on how the state's uh, economic uh, status can be improved. There's an email address right. where your office is accepting uh, those ideas. We want to put that email address on the screen right now. It's budget at governor.state.ms.us. And along those lines, do you have any thoughts about how citizens uh, might... Uh, improve the state's economic uh, status, or is there anything they can do? Well, there's a lot they can do. I mean, first of all, try to encourage state agencies to do their best but not think that how much money you get is the test of how you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we can improve education, for instance, and it's not all about money. In fact, there's some problems we have money won't solve. Mm -hmm. Okay, Governor, thank you. Half an hour has gone very quickly, but that is all the time that we have for tonight's program. I'd like to thank Governor Haley Barber for being our guest tonight. And we also want to thank you for joining our discussion. You may view tonight's program on our website beginning tomorrow. That address is mpbonline.org. And also, if you have any suggestions for the governor on how to save money and cut government spending, you may email your ideas to budget at governor.state.ms.us. I'm Ron Brown. Good night.